our top 10 Michigan sports predictions for 2020 are next here on this week's episode of Michigan Podcast. But there's going to be one team that's going to play solely as a team. No man is more important than the team. No coach is more important than the team. The team, the team, the team. Looks deep for Anthony Clark. Waits for it. Tim Clark. This is no time for that. In the pocket and a sack. Tim Jamison. Brady gets terrific. Throws it. And a touchdown night again. Schultz just before Brazil got him. And a leaping interception by Woodson. Harbaugh back to throw over the middle. Caught by Collins at the five on his feet. Touchdown, Michigan. On his way. It's good. He's 5'7", 179 pounds. A junior at Michigan. But Jamie Morris packs a wallop. And he delivers for Bo Schimbeck. And here's your first play. Pressure coming. Second. It is Glenn Steele, number 81, who fought his way through the traffic. Option. And Robinson calls his own number, and he's going to score. Oh, an easy touchdown for Robinson and Michigan. Winner. We're going to win the championship again because we're going to play as a team. And when we play as a team, and the old season is over, you and I know it's going to be Michigan again. Michigan. Go Blue, and welcome to this week's episode of Michigan Podcast. I'm Steve Dace. We'll have Brandon Brown and Michael Spath back with us for the uh, full roster of the Michigan Podcast Roundtable, the Wolverine Digest Roundtable, coming up a little bit later on. And that's when we'll look at my top 10 Michigan sports predictions for 2020. And we'll let uh, Michael and Brandon decide which of these could come true and, and which of these do I need to be drug tested for even considering. But I want to begin on a sadly somewhat somber note. And, you know, it never rains, but pours, man. And I, I, I think you all know, I love me some Xavier Simpson, which is why when I got the news, like so many of you did yesterday, which is Monday, because we're taping this on a Tuesday. When we got the word on Monday that uh, Coach Juwan Howard was, was forced to suspend him for the game against Nebraska. And based on some things I'm hearing, I don't, I don't think this is going to be a one game thing. I hope I'm wrong. I hope I'm, what I'm hearing is wrong. Um, and what I'm, what I'm talking about is the length of the suspension, not the offense. Okay. But um, it's a tough time to be a Michigan fan right now. I mean, it just is. I mean, it, it, we've got a football team that just seems mired in this um, land of pretty good. The friend zone, as I described it a few episodes back, they just cannot seem to get over the hump. And I don't know about you, but I'm, and I hate this because I love Harbaugh, but I'm, I'm really losing hope that he's going to get us there. And when I say there, I mean like, can we just, you know, get to Indianapolis? Can you believe the program with more Big Ten football championships than anybody else by far? Still hasn't even been to the Big Ten Championship game yet. Still. I mean, forget the playoff. I'd, I'd like to get to the Big Ten playoff game, let alone the college football playoff. And then there's this suspension of Xavier Simpson, one of my all-time favorite Michigan basketball players. But man, whatever you did that caused you to get suspended, you're letting your team down. You're the captain, you're the senior, you're the leader. You know, we're in a slump. We need you right now. This was a winnable road game. And now against Nebraska, I don't think that it is. <sighs> Man. It's tough. 
It's tough being a Michigan fan right now. And I don't see a lot of hope on the horizon in football of getting over that hump. I mean, I haven't won a game in Columbus since they had Steve Belisari at quarterback in 2000. And they don't have Steve Belisari at quarterback in 2020. So I don't see us winning there and getting off the schneid. I think basketball is, it's just fired up to Tom Petty, man. I think we're free falling now. There's just not a lot of get well games on the schedule. We're playing a home game against Rutgers on Saturday. They've got their best team in like 50 years. (laughs) It's tough. Especially if you're like me. I mean, this is your escape, particularly in the wintertime. The desolation of the Midwest. And now a basketball season that seems so promising kind of now seems like it might be over. I mean, let's face it. We're just kind of hoping now that Juwan Howard holds on to that recruiting class because you know all those veteran coaches that he beat out for those elite prospects, you know they're calling them right now. Told you so. Rookie coach in over his head. I mean, he has nothing to do with Isaiah Livers getting hurt or whatever the traffic incident is that Brandon uh, Brendan Quinn at The Athletic is reporting, that's what it was. He's got nothing to do with that situation with Xavier Simpson either. But And then we've got, you know, another eight and a half months of Michigan football and Jim Harbaugh trolling to look forward to from the college football media. And, and, and so much of it we actually deserve that it's not even worth pushing back against the fake news part of it anymore? What's the point? We're going to prove most of it right by the end of the season anyway. I don't know. Maybe I'm just whining. Or maybe I've got reason to whine. Well, let's get to it. It's time for the roundtable portion of the episode this week on Michigan Podcast. And the crew, the trio here from Wolverine Digest are now back and reunited. Michael Spath uh, from WTKA, as well as his co-host Brandon Brown here with me this week on Michigan Podcast. It's good to have you both back with us. And Brandon, uh, as we uh, gave to to Mr. Spath a few weeks ago, congratulations uh, to you uh, as, as a new father. Uh, we're very excited for you and your family. So I'm sure it's an exciting time around the brown household at the moment it, it absolutely is i had my little guy uh, sleeping on my chest when the phone call came through so mom had to grab him <laughs> up and put him in his little lounger and now here here we are let's get this podcast rolling man here we go i gotta tell you i got so dang good at ncaa football when when our when our oldest <laughs> anna was a baby she would just sleep on my chest all day and all night and i tell amy i, I can't move i got to keep playing i don't want to wake up the baby it was a great excuse <laughs> It was a great excuse. All right. So uh, at the start of the year for our website, I put together a series of 10 videos with my 10 Michigan sports predictions for 2020. I'm going to count these down again here for the audience this week on Michigan podcast. I'm going to go back and forth and give each of you guys an opportunity. Every other, every other one of these to tell me if you think it's uh, it's possible, no way, or you need to be drug tested. That's insane. It's it's it, it that's just nuts. All right. Are you guys ready to go? Yep. Ready. All right, Brandon, you get to go first as the newest of the new dads. All right. 
Michigan football will add three immediately eligible grad transfers in this offseason, two defensive linemen and one offensive lineman. That's my first prediction for 2020. Your thoughts on that one? Mm, man, that seems a little steep. A little steep. I, I think... Oh man, yeah. I mean, there are some. There have been enough names floating around out there to to satisfy that prediction. Uh, Devery Hamilton, the lineman. Um, Terrence Davis, an offensive lineman. Michael Williams, uh, the defensive lineman. Javon Swan. It's funny that all these guys are from Stanford. It seems like they had a <laughs> lot of mass exodus from out there for whatever reason. But I think three is a little steep. I, I could see one each. I could see one on each side of the ball, and you try to piece it together with the rest of the guys that they have already in house. So I will say I, I wouldn't, it wouldn't shock me, but I, I think that sounds like a lot. I think that's a little bit too high. All right, Michael, you get this next one. Uh, number nine of my uh, top 10 predictions for Michigan sports in 2020, Michigan will win the big 10 in baseball, but not make it back to the college world series. I mean, I, I think it's not only possible, but probable. I mean, like what Michigan did a year ago, getting to the national championship game as a northern sport is incredible, uh, but it's 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 rare. I mean, it's incredibly rare. I don't think that that happens again. I mean, you you have to some have so many breaks. You have to have a really four pitch, which Michigan relied on heavily a year ago. Yeah, I mean, I, I think they're the best team in the Big Ten. I think we were talking about it today after our show that there's going to be a lot more excitement and energy and. Hopefully the weather cooperates, and so you can get a lot more people at some of these games at Ray Fisher Stadium this year. Um, but to predict them to, to go back to the College World Series, no, no I, I, if it happens, awesome, and we'll love it and we'll follow it along. But I, I think they'd probably get to the uh, Super Regional, and, and that's about as far as they go. Brandon Brown, you get prediction number eight of my top ten Michigan sports predictions for 2020 here on Michigan Podcast. And I might cheat a little bit and let Michael give us his take on this one, too, given what it is. But new Big Ten commissioner Kevin Warren is going to announce that the league is scrapping its East-West division format in football and it won't have any divisions in Big Ten football in the next few years. It kind of seems like all of football is moving towards that a little bit with the the talk of an expanded playoff and maybe that conference championships will go away. I don't know if it's 2020. That seems a little soon. No, I, I don't do think, think it'll start it this will... season. I think he'll announce it though oh. this year. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, I think that's possible. I do. I think that's possible. I mean, I don't know much about, you know, the new commissioner, his personality, like, you know, is he a cowboy? Does he want to come in and make a statement or ruffle some feathers and say like, you know, announce himself as being here, you know, take it over for Jim Delaney who did it for so long. Um, but I think, I think college football in general is moving towards that. So it wouldn't surprise me if it's this year, but, um, but I do think eventually that will be what happens and you can, you can have a lot more freedom and scheduling and uh, you know, the games do probably tend to mean a little bit more. You won't get these weird rematches at the end of the season. And then, it, you know, again, it'll lend itself a little bit more to the expanded playoff that I think is also inevitable. Michael, you have any thoughts on that prediction? You know what? I certainly think that the fans would like to see this. And I know that it works for the Big 12. Uh, and there's, some, there's been some clamoring and there will be some clamoring every single year. But I, I tell you what, I don't know in the Big 10 who really wants this. Does Michigan and Ohio State want this? Do they want to play the final game of the regular season and then turn around and play each other again if it works out that way? You know, the only school I think that might really want this is Penn State because they could play uh, – they don't have to play Ohio State maybe in a given year and they want to get there. But Wisconsin, uh, Minnesota, Iowa, Nebraska, do they want this where they have to play a round-robin schedule and then merge one of the two best teams? No, they have it made right now coming out of the West. I mean, if you're P.J. Flack, if you're Paul Christ, if you're Kirk Ferentz, you're going to vote this down immediately. You're going to tell them, like, absolutely not. We want to keep it the way it is because we don't have the financial resources. We don't have the recruiting opportunities uh, to to compete with an Ohio State, with a Michigan, with a Michigan State, Penn State on a regular basis. So I don't think there's as much desire within each of the programs for this to happen as it is from the fans and from the media. Hmm. That's interesting analysis, Michael. Let's go back to you with prediction number seven. 
And I laid out the three reasons why I believe this on last week's show. But I'm going to predict that Joe Milton will be Michigan's starting quarterback against Washington in the season opener on September 5th. And I know you've got an article up on our site from a couple of days ago with some quarterback chatter. And I, I read that and it's essentially sources telling you, well, Dylan McCaffrey's got the most experience. That's why they think he's going to start. I think that's way overhyped. All that, that experience advantage was all in an old offense. They've all been in, they've both been in Josh Gaddis's offense an equal amount of time. In fact, Milton's probably got better reps because of how much uh, that uh, McCaffrey was injured last year. Uh, and, and I also think Jim has shown the last few years that he's fine being a contrarian or that he was never going to fire Tim Drevno until he did. He was never going to give up control of the offense until he did. Right. We, we have seen him willing to buck his own paradigm. So I, I, and, and, and I say this by the way, as a Dylan McCaffrey fan, I'm just concerned about a guy that has had two serious injuries and only 36 career passing attempts. But what do you think? I think experience weighs out. I mean, if you look at the quarterback position underneath Harbaugh, the first year, Rudock, uh, he's a fifth year senior, a grad transfer. They want the most experienced guy. The following year, uh, you know, between John O'Corn, Wilton Spade, and Brandon Peters, he went with what he had seen with his own eyes, and that was Wilton Spade in a couple of backup moments in 2015. And then in 2017, you know, all three of those guys were jockeying again, and it was Wilton Spade. And in 2018, you had a grad transfer or a transfer in Shea Patterson. Uh, and you went with uh, the known quantity. I, I think he likes to go with the known quantity. And I will say this. If Harbaugh picks the quarterback, I think it's McCaffrey. If Josh Gaddis picks the quarterback as the offensive coordinator, I think there's a really good chance that it could be Milton because he's talked about you know, age and experience don't matter. It's about innovation. It's about what you can do. Um, but I ultimately think that uh, Jim Harbaugh will decide who his starting quarterback is, and that's why I think it'll be Dylan McCaffrey. All right, we go back to you here, Brandon. This is my number six prediction for Michigan sports in 2020. This seems like a pipe dream right now. Uh, didn't so much when I uh, you know, taped this on December 23rd of last year. Michigan basketball will finish fourth in the Big Ten in Juwan Howard's first season, but then win the Big Ten tournament for the third time in four years. I, I, this, this seems like I put down the crack pipe at this particular moment, but I would say this, the top four in the Big Ten thing's not going to happen. I'll, I'll say this, though. You know, when Michigan lost to Northwestern in early February two years ago and, and then didn't lose a game again until Villanova on the final Monday night of the season. I mean, we, we have seen in college basketball teams that even a month or two with, with your, or even a week or two left in the season, you're like, I think those guys are dead as a doornail. Think of the year UConn had to win the Big East to get in and then won six in a row to win the NCAA. So that part's not crazy, but I don't think there's any chance. But, I mean, if Isaiah Livers and Xavier Simpson returned uh, miraculously for Saturday against Rutgers, I still don't think there's a chance that they could finish in the top four in the Big Ten. So there I am preemptively undermining my own prediction. Now it's your turn. <laughs> Yeah, it was you talked me down off of how harsh I wanted to be a little bit on the on the NCAA tournament run, but I still think I still think we might need to break out the drug test for the first time on this one, Steve. I, I don't think, uh, yeah, the the finish of the conference. I mean, you kind of laid out the reasons why that's not going to happen, and it, they're just too inconsistent. I, I mean, and I know you, you've given some specific examples where I'm sure if you went back and tracked those teams and you know, a night by night basis and how they were playing in January or December, you'd probably see a lot of inconsistencies too, but. I just think it's just it's been too much, especially with Isaiah Livers being injured, and who knows if he'll be able to contribute any meaningful minutes again for the rest of the year. Uh, and you know, based on what we, you know, based on what we are kind of hearing some scuttlebutt about Xavier Simpson, you know, the status of his playing with uh, with Michigan moving forward, we just don't know. There's too many too many uncertainties around the program right now. Uh, Jawan Howard is still a first year head coach. He still has shown. Uh, you know, that he's he's still figuring it out a little bit. And Michigan is relying on a true freshman in Franz Wagner and several true sophomores to play some pretty meaningful minutes in Brandon Johns. And uh, David DeJulius, Colin Castleton has been pushed out of the rotation a little bit, and Adrian Nunez almost completely. So I, I just don't see it with this team. Uh, you know, on the radio earlier today, we just about all predicted Michigan to lose tonight at Nebraska, which, you know, they're one of the few teams below Michigan in the standings in the conference. So, I, yeah, I, I just don't see it for this year, and I think the roster has some faults on it right now. Even if John Beeline were still the guy, I don't know how much better the team would be. 
Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm thinking uh, pretty strongly that your prediction is off <laughs> is off basis, even though it was only a month a month ago. It was very different, a very different feel. You know, if Michigan drops five in a row tonight, that'll you know, that'll be a, a pretty bad look. Indeed, we are at life comes at you fast meme bro uh, or bro meme territory for Michigan basketball right now, which brings me to another Michigan basketball prediction uh, that Michael, you'll get a chance to mock now. Uh, again, th- this sounded great on back on December twenty third when I taped this video, but Michigan will be a number four seed in the NCAA tournament and make it to the Sweet Sixteen before being eliminated. Go ahead, Michael. It's a hanging curveball. Have at it. Well, uh, hanging curveball. I like it. A big fat watermelon coming across the plate. Indeed, yes. Yeah, I was gonna. I was gonna make a snarky, smart ass remark about like, well, you want to just substitute NCAA for NIT, and we're all set here. Um, you know, from what what Brandon was talking about too, and, and just kind of how we listen to Juwan Howard and some of the scuttlebutt we've been hearing. Uh, yeah, I think Xavier Simpson probably misses another game. Um, after this one, and if you miss these two games, it's just going to be so difficult. Him being out with, even when he comes back, I mean, what does that team look like? Do they trust him completely? Do they, uh, do they, are, 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 is he getting, is he losing minutes to, to David DeJulius? What if DeJulius pops and they put Xavier Simpson back in, uh, in the line, the starting lineup? I, I just think there's too many distractions going on. You had Isaiah Livers in there. Their only hope really, I think, of getting that sweet tournament is Isaiah Livers coming back in mid-February. Michigan kind of going on like a four-game run at the end of the season and then winning a couple of games in the Big Ten tournament. Because I just think this thing's going to spiral a little bit longer uh, than just the, the four-game losing streak. They might win tonight, but I don't know if they win you know, a, a more than the Northwestern game after that um, in this little uh, eight-game stretch that they've had. So I don't see them, I don't see them being – they're certainly not a four-seed uh, they might be an eight or nine seed in one of the last four in if all goes according to plan, honestly. Okay. Brandon, our number four Michigan sports prediction for 2020, five-star wing Josh Christopher. Now, there's a lot of buzz about this now. Back on December 23rd, this was a uh, this was a gambit. Not so much now where he's got a lot of crystal ball leads, but five-star wing Josh Christopher will shockingly sign with Michigan. Yeah, I actually, again, going back to when you first put this together in late December, shockingly was probably the right word, but now it would almost be a shock if he didn't from what it sounds like. He is down to, I don't know if he has like an official top three, but it sounds like it's Michigan, UCLA, or Arizona State uh, with Michigan pace in the pack. I know he was really, really, really good friends with uh, Sharif O'Neal, Shaquille O'Neal's son, uh, who was at UCLA, but has announced he is transferring. So that kind of seems to have poked a hole in what UCLA was trying to do and yeah, I mean, he, you know, Michael and I were texting back and forth uh, during one of Michigan's more recent basketball games. Uh, it, was the, it was the Illinois game when Ayo Desunmu was kind of taking over and he, he's getting to the lane and he's doing pull-up jumpers over a guy he's got a lot of size on. And we're thinking like, man, wouldn't it be great if Michigan had a guy like that? And then Michael kind of responded back like, yeah, that would be Joshua Christopher if he decides <laughs> to come to Michigan. So I, I it, it feels, uh, and you know, admittedly, I, I'm not super plugged into the basketball recruiting side of things, but it, it, it's really starting to pick up some pick up some momentum and look like he might, uh, you know, he might spurn the West Coast teams and head to Michigan, and, and that would be another great coup for for Jawan Howard on the recruiting trail. I know we're kind of still waiting and seeing with Isaiah Todd, the other five star commitment right now, if he's going to play at Michigan or go overseas. So. You know, Jawan's recruiting really, really well. He's going to have to put a couple little bows on it here at the end. But it sounds like, yeah, it sounds like the most likely destination for Christopher at this point on January 28th is Michigan. I remember when Jawan got hi- got hired, there were a lot of questions about his recruiting shops and connections, things of that nature. Uh, it seemed like three seconds after he got the job, he made an offer to a, a a young man that a lot of Michigan fans just didn't even pay attention to, figuring there was no chance he'd ever come to Michigan. That scholarship offer was to Josh Christopher. And now here we are, mm-hmm. uh, what, eight or nine months later, and now that looks like it, that could turn out to be a, a stroke of genius. All right, so Michael, you get the number four Michigan sports prediction for two 2020 i'm sorry the number three michigan sports prediction juan howard if you do the math with the class calculator at 24 7 sports he will sign the highest rated basketball recruiting class by a big 10 school since 2006 that's that's 15 years 
Yeah, I mean, I think it's pretty accurate. Um, I, they're, they're number four class right now. I think they're pretty much locked into number four uh, after they after they got Chase Howard, Juwan Sun on board. And then, uh, you know, if they get Josh Christopher, I think they might be able to get up to number three. Uh, but at the very least, they're, they're still locked in in the top five. Uh, you know, I don't have the, I don't remember having the, the full list in front of me uh, as I'm driving right now. But I mean, I know Michigan State have been in there once or twice, and Ohio State I think was in there. Uh, but certainly, it's, it's, it'll be the best class in about a decade for the Big Ten. And, and I'll add something else to it too that stood out to me when I was looking at this: is the last five years, you see Duke and you see North Carolina and you see Kansas and you see Kentucky and you see Arizona and UCLA in the top five consistently over and over again. I think in the last five years, Michigan would be uh, the highest ranked team to what most of us consider uh, the, among the non gray area, the mm-hmm. non cheaters. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, if, if you're a Duke Blue Devil fan and you think that your team operates uh, above board 100%, I've got some news for you. You don't. Um, North Carolina certainly doesn't. Kansas. I mean, it is almost like putting it in front of everybody, like, hey, hey, we don't care. The NCAA is not going to do anything to us. Uh, Kentucky, I mean, a lot of these programs don't. And, and it might not be blatant, but there's a lot of gray areas. And so Michigan, I think Villanova's in that mix. Uh, I believe there's a Virginia class, an NC State, which I, I'm not really sure one way or another, and a Michigan State class. So uh, it's pretty remarkable what Juwan Howard is putting together, his first recruiting class. And if he gets Christopher, uh, then, yes, it absolutely will go down. Um, as one of, if, if he gets Christopher, it's the best class that Michigan has signed since the second Fab Five, uh, that Maurice Taylor, Willie Mitchell, Travis Conlon uh, class. Gerard Ward in that class too, right? Number one player in the country, if I remember right, correct? Gerard Ward, and I, who was the fifth one? It wasn't Lewis Bullock. That was they, that was the next wave. He signed with like Robert. Year with, with Albert White and Robert Trailer. And Robert yeah. Trailer, yeah. Yeah, I got to think about who the other player was. So, yep. There was a fifth guy. I just don't remember who it was. Brandon, you get uh, the penultimate prediction for 2020 here. Michigan will lose at least three games in football again, as it has every season under Jim Harbaugh. I don't know how you could argue otherwise. I mean, I, I just, you know, it's it's like death and taxes at this point. I, I just don't know how. I don't know what. I mean, you could take the most diehard blind Michigan fan in the world and ask them to provide you some provide you some you know some evidence as to why it wouldn't happen I don't know I mean what could they say what could they what could anybody say that would convince you otherwise I mean it's you know you look at the schedule if it's the Washington game to start the year you know being on the road out west certainly a challenging environment Ohio State at the end of the year and then you you know I don't know you sprinkle in any one of the teams where Michigan is going to have to either go on the road or play a team with comparable talent, and those have been losses. I mean, that's just that's just the way it's been under Jim Harbaugh. And, you know, that's not piling on. That's not saying he's not a good coach. That's not saying the players aren't given what they need to give. It's just a fact. It's what has happened every year that he's been here. And so and until that changes, I don't know how you could say anything otherwise. And, you know, we, we've talked about this a, a lot on the radio, and it, it's – it's just that it is what it is at this point. And so, I, yeah, I think if anybody, you know, if anybody actually offers you up a, a, a bet with some action like that, you should probably, you should probably take it. I, I think there's, it's, it's just the obvious answer at this point. All right, Michael, you get my number one prediction for 2020. And Brandon, I'm going to even the score and let you chime in on this one as well. Jim Harbaugh will either accomplish something significant in 2020. Now, let me define that since that's an obvious follow-up question. Beat Ohio State, win the division, uh, uh, win the Big Ten, win 11 games, uh, win a major bowl, something along those lines, okay? Jim Harbaugh will either accomplish something significant in 2020 or 2020 will be his final season on the sideline as Michigan's head coach. Now, I could foresee a caveat to this. If they were to go like a 9 and 3 again, but it looks but they sign in December 3 4 5 top 100 kids, which it is possible because we have an abnormally strong year of upper t- of uh, elite level talent in Michigan in the 2020 
2021 prep ranks, and you've already got a five-star quarterback signed, then I, I could see that being a selling point uh, to keep that class in the fold. But but barring that, I, I just think it, we're at the point now, you can and you see anecdotal signs, the meltdown at the press conference with the wife, the podcast that's mysteriously disappeared. Um, they're just, you, 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 you see it in the, the comment section. I was listening to another Michigan uh, podcast hosted by Isaiah Hole talking about how his numbers are down. Even with football, it's, this is the most negative people have been uh, since uh, before Harbaugh came. And, and I just think if you go through that again with another end of the year slump, you, you're running out of things to sell. So I, I think this is a determinative year this year. Your thoughts? You know what? I'm going to disagree. Uh, I think he signed an original seven-year contract, and I think that he will get seven years. Uh, something that I have been told is that you know he still has, I believe, uh, about a $10 million on his buyout. Uh, and what I've been told is that because they don't want to make him appear like a lame duck coach, uh, that he could get signed to a two- or three-year contract extension, probably more likely a three-year contract extension, um, but with a really low buyout, something in the range of a million and a half, two and a half million dollars, which Michigan would, you know, if need to, uh, I wouldn't say they're ever going to fire Jim Harbaugh, but they could have some type of mutual, you know, agreement to part ways where he still gets a little bit of his buyout. Um, and so I think that is more likely than him just getting him walking away or Michigan severing ties. And I would tell you something that I, that when, uh, someone inside the athletic department told me this and I kind of, I, I chuckled a little bit cause I said, uh, you know, I, I remember when you were, you made this prediction and I thought, I asked him what he thought of this and he said, well, cause I'll tell you what next year schedule pretty hard with, going to Washington, open up the season, finishing at Ohio State. Now we got to play a Minnesota team on the road. And, you know, Michigan State's down, but it's got to be it's in East Lansing. Plus you got Wisconsin and Penn State on the schedule. And he said in two years, you know, you get Washington at home and you get Ohio State at home and you get Michigan State at home. And there's, um, you know, I, I think Wisconsin comes off the schedule. And he's like, it's just a much more, it's almost like a perfect storm in two years to create like an ideal scenario for Michigan football. And, I kind of laughed. And I said, "Cause that's that's exactly what it was in 2018, and um, and in you know 2000. Uh, I'm sorry, this this past year with having Michigan State and and Ohio State at home and Notre Dame at home. So I just don't think that Michigan is is ready to completely get rid of him. Uh, and we'll have to see what the fan base is like. But I think 2021 is more likely to be Jim Harbaugh's final season. Well, I, I, for the record, I, I want I want this to be a determinative year because he does one of those significant things. Okay, so um, I, I'm as I've told you guys before, I'm really torn up about this because he's my all-time favorite player. I mean, he's the first Michigan football player I fell in love with as a kid when I became a Michigan fan, and um, yet I'm beyond frustrated and just tired of the of the of the of the friend zone thing we've talked about previously. So, um, yep. and 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 I can just tell you, having covered a lot of coaching searches in my career, they're always a crapshoot, always, always. OK, I mean, unless unless you're willing to, you know, take the full collateral damage of hiring someone like an Urban Meyer, they're always a crapshoot. But I also understand human nature and 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 you just talk to your own audience. You you know what the next eight months of phone calls on your show right there in the heart of Ann Arbor are. Add another loss to Ohio State and everything else. And I just, I don't see how they recalibrate that if he can't get it done. But I, I would like to see him get it done. That's my first, second, third, and fourth choice if it was up to me. But it's not up to me uh, as a fan and, and as an analyst. I'm kind of running out of hope that he can get it done. But Brandon, I want to even the score and give you a chance to chime in on this prediction. Go ahead. Yeah, I mean, I, you know, to, was it, was it three things you said? Win 11 games, win the Big Ten, beat Ohio State? Was yeah, that, I yeah. Mean, I don't, win, win a major I, bowl. I'd like say, if they, if they went 10 and 2 and won the Rose Bowl, we'd be okay with okay, that. Okay, yeah. Right? Something like that? Yeah. I, I, I don't, I don't see 11 wins. I, I mean, 
going back to the previous question you asked me, I, I said, yeah, I, I would bet on them losing at least three because that's what's happened every single year. So I don't, if, if you do the math, that there's no way you can get 11 wins and also lose three games. So I would, I would bet on, I would bet against winning 11 games. I would certainly bet against um, being Ohio State. That that just seems like a, a, an impossibility at this point, based on how the last two years have looked. And so that obviously kind of uh, eliminates the chance of winning a Big Ten title as well. Now maybe, you know, I don't know if if Michigan had. I mean, it wasn't close in this regard either. But if Michigan had beat Alabama this past year, would you call that? A significant bowl win. I mean, probably, but looked like they're not anywhere near doing that either. So, I guess I guess you could you could debate back and forth and argue a little bit about what a significant bowl win looks like. Like which team satisfies significant. Um, but at that point, it's just semantics. Really, it doesn't really count for anything. So, I, I don't see any of those things happening. And and the contract thing with Harbaugh. You know what Michael was just talking about. You know, if Jim Harbaugh's going into year six and gets to the halfway point and starts coming down the home stretch of year six and doesn't have a new contract in place, that's that's just a that's some you know, that's some murky water that you don't often put a coach in because then there's you know, recruits and parents are saying, Well, you you don't even have a new contract in place. What does that mean? Like you're recruiting my kid but next year you're not even gonna be there or year seven is your final year and they're not gonna renew your contract, you're not coming back. So the the idea of a two or three year extension with a much, much lower buyout seems to make a lot of sense um so i no, i don't think next year will be jim harbaugh's last year i think he will get the full seven uh with with maybe some form of some reform in there with his contract that would give michigan a little bit easier of an out because i agree with you steve i mean if you talk about another another year of two to three to four losses another loss to ohio state and another you know just insignificant bowl loss, which is what they've been over the last four years, then I, I mean, I can't even imagine what it sounds like and feels like in Ann Arbor. Cause I know what it sounds and feels like already and it sucks. <laughs> so hmm. I, I just don't, I just don't know how any of those things can be. I don't know how any Michigan fan or anybody who's looking at it realistically can say that any of those things would happen. Gentlemen, let's hope the good ones come true and the bad ones don't. Uh, it's always good to talk to you. Good to have uh, both of you back again here with us on Michigan Podcast, and uh, we'll talk to you next week. Thanks, Steve. Sounds good. Take care. Thanks, guys. Have a good one. All right. See you. This week's Twitter poll results, we asked you, do you still think Michigan will make the NCAA basketball tournament? Props to the 37% of you out there saying yes. Keep hope alive. Keeping the hope alive. But 63% of you are saying no, and I sadly think you have the right answer. Which brings us to this week's question of the week from Malachi13. Steve, what do you think of these new uniforms? I don't know that I like any of them. Um, these are alternative designs for those of you that are only doing the audio. And they all incorporate the state of Michigan. I think somebody has sent these to us in the uh, something similar to this a few years ago. The gray, I'm out. I mean, I, I don't get the whole gray. If gray and silver is not one of your school colors, I think gray as an alternative third jersey is dumb. I, I hate when schools do that, okay? Um, the white is okay. The the blue and the maize is okay, but I don't know. Having the state of Michigan in there on the uniform, it seems very Maryland. And when it comes to uniforms and football, I don't want to emulate anything Maryland does. So I'm going to pass. I'm also, though, in a pretty in a pretty bad mood. So that could have something to do with it. 
want to thank all of you for tuning in. Don't forget to check us out all week at WolverineDigest.com. Follow us on Twitter at Michigan Podcast. Hopefully, we'll have some good things to talk about next week. Like, subscribe, and review. Whether it's YouTube or iTunes or Stitcher or Google Play, please, the more of those that you do and the more of those we get, the more it helps to spread the word to other Michigan fans all over the interwebs. We'll be back at it again next week. Until then, go Blue.